Oh. You're thinking of like the giving tree. <laughs> yes, right? exactly. Yeah. But this is more like the giving bush. <laughs> the giving bush. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm writing, I use a book title generator to kind of give me ideas about a story I want to write. And it usually comes up with some pretty good titles that are at least interesting. Yeah. So Retha is going to use a random book title generator, and then we're going to try to think of a story that would apply to that book title. Most likely, I'll like give little bits of info, and Tony will just fill in the rest and make it sound way better. So the first one, Beggar Saga. So I'm seeing like a, it's going to be an epic fantasy novel about a a beggar child, like I guess a peasant, like a dirt poor peasant, hmm. that reluctantly becomes a knight and then ends up fighting his way to becoming the king at the very end. Excuse me, beggar saga. Oh wow, that makes it sound super right? grandiose. And then I guess it's like I guess it's a sword and sorcery novel because of course, but I like that how um, George R. R. Martin builds the magic in his world is very subtle. So I like that kind of subtle magic. God. So although uh, it's a sword and sorcery novel, it's mostly sword, a little bit of sorcery. Mm. Uh, although fantasy is kind of overdone, so we need some kind of a twist to make it interesting. Like, why are you picking up this fantasy novel versus another one? Mm -hmm. What do you mean fantasy is overdone? What? Well, it's, let's say it's saturated, let's say. Okay. Right. What? It's not saturated? That's There's not a bunch of fantasy okay. novels? Okay, yes, but most of them aren't any good. <laughs> Okay, let's make this one good. We need a twist <laughs> to take this beggar kid turning yeah. into a king. Mm -hmm. We need some kind of a twist. Mm -hmm. Give me the twist. Something different that hasn't been done? Yeah. Oh, Lord. All right, so how about we have, like, insects in the world, right? Insectoids. So all fantasy novels have some kind of interesting characters, dragons, fairies. I'll remove all of that from my story, and only the insects in my story are very magical. Uh, they're slightly bigger than regular ones, so you can imagine like dragonflies flying around, butterflies flying around, and uh, little, what are those red things with black dots? We were gonna Ladybugs? That's it, a ladybug. Oh. So we got little ladybugs running around, right? And then you would need <laughs> to like capture them to either- uh, Write on them? Just kidding to use them in your magical like okay. potions and spells and things like that because you can't just oh use God. magic. You need to have a reason to use magic. So now you're going through the world and you're collecting all of these magical bugs. But you're killing them? And uh, I don't know, should we kill them? That's should we kill them using use them in some kind of a potion for magic or should we kill or keep them alive and they help us in some way? Maybe that. Keep them alive? Yeah. All right, so we're murdering insects. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them alive! Alright, so now we have... Why does everything always have to be murder? So how are we going to use these insects if, if they're alive? I don't know, ask them nicely? Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. So we have a bunch of like wizards and people that can use magic by capturing these bugs. They're capturing them, not killing them. Yeah. And only certain people can use them because only certain people can whisper to insects. Yeah. And if they can whisper to the insects, they'll allow the insects to do work for them. And the work they do is cast magic spells. There we go. I like that so much better. And then it's kind of like Pokemon where you got to oh, catch them all yeah. and you can catch different ones and interesting ones. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. I like that. And this boy learns that he is a whisperer slowly over time. Mm. He's a beggar. He starts to encounter different interesting insects and they help him throughout a story to become a king. Hmm. Like a wizard king? A wizard king. <laughs> the, the beggar wizard king. The That'll be book two, wizard king. <laughs> wizard king. Okay, right, that was pretty cool. I like how you said, let's get rid of all those other typical ones. Bugs. <laughs> Just stick with the bugs. Okay, the next one is the young hedge. The young hedge. Well, this is your turn. No. I what? suck at this. Okay, so you're just gonna, I'm just have to come up with yeah, it? Yeah, I then... guess so. The young hedge. Because uh, honestly, you want to know what came to my mind? Sure. A children's book. A, okay. a bush that grows and it somehow tells some kind of a meaningful <laughs> story to kids. I don't know. You're thinking of like the giving tree. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. But this is more like the giving bush. <laughs> the giving bush. <laughs> Where it doesn't have much to give because oh it's a bush. There's <laughs> yeah. not a lot of wood in it. It could be like really delicious berries. Dang. Okay, so it's got some berries. I think the giving tree had some apples. So yeah, this one see? would give you some like sour <laughs> berries. And he's like, take Don't. my leaves. And he's, the boy's like, what leaves? And he's like, use my wood to build your house. What wood? You just got a bunch of spindly branches. Oh, 
my god, that's honestly what came to my mind. And it's a story about how you should appreciate your friends, even though they're spindly little bushes. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Oh, I can't stop laughing. That's funny. All right, that's book two. (laughs) Book three. Um, Memory of Factor. That is not a good title, but let's go with it. I know. I feel like I'm getting like uh, like Jason Bourne stuff going on, or even like what's that one with Tom Cruise? Where they have Mission those, Impossible? No. Where they have those people that can see the future of crimes. Scientology? Like, no. no. <laughs> 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 There's like some yeah, version. Minority they can, Report. Minority Report. There you go. I, I feel like some kind of mixture of those two. Something going on. Oh, okay. So like a crime fiction story yeah. set in the not too distant future. Right. Okay. So it's got to be some kind of like mind thing where you're using your mind to solve a crime. Hmm. Um, but it, again, it's got to have some kind of twist. It can't be like Johnny Mnemonic or it can't be like Minority Report, right? Right. That's immediately just what I thought. It was like a Jason Bourne Minority Report mixture something. So I'll tell you what, the twist we're going to give this one is we're going to put Jason Momoa in it. <gasps> he's going to be a tall, athletic Hawaiian man <gasps> in Iowa. And that he's using his memory of a crime that he downloaded off of... Uh, <laughs> A farmer's almanac tablet he found, and he realized some uh, big, like, farmer guy is trying to, like, outbid a bunch of other small farmers in Iowa, and he's got to use his memory of cows to (laughs) solve this guy's crime and stop this big land developer. Well... So there you, you go. Wait, you don't like the mixture of Jason Momoa and cows and a bunch of white people I, in Iowa? I mean, <laughs> to be honest, though, based off of a lot of movies and stuff that he's done, that sounds like something he'd probably say yes to. <laughs> and he's blind throughout the whole thing. Oh, time. God. Oh, like from C? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All a mixture of everything. Got it. That was a terrible title. Yeah, that next. was. Next. The next one, The Roads Sunday. The Roads, just Sunday, two words? Sunday. Like, Saturday, Road Sunday. Sunday. I the feel Road like Sunday. it should be like a historical fiction. I want to say like it's like a like a road trip kind of deal. Mm. But instead of like a road trip just across the U.S., let's make it a road trip all in the 1920s. And for some mm. reason, I'm thinking about this because I recently watched a movie called Midnight in Paris. With, <gasps> have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah, where he goes to Paris and then all of a sudden he's uh, transported to like 1920s. Mm-hmm. Paris, mm-hmm. where he was in modern day Paris. Mm-hmm. So I guess it would be something like that, right? Like they yeah. travel just like midnight in Paris. They are now time traveling through different spots because, you know, the 405 freeway takes you to different times. <laughs> oh my God, because oh it takes so long. I was thinking more of some sort of like Southern like love story. I thought maybe like some younger adults maybe falling in love at church or something. That's terrible. Somewhere in the South. And then something... <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I think that's a good title for a bland movie in both cases, right? <laughs> Two old men do it going on a road trip, boring. Uh, people <laughs> yeah. falling in love in the South, boring. <laughs> it's just a terrible title. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Not all the titles work out. The Clash of the Tyranny. That sounds pretty epic. Oh, The Clash of the Tyranny. That's mm-hmm. pretty good. I don't know. Give me a genre. What genre do you think this would be? Um, let's do... Shall I challenge you and say romance? Just oh, kidding. Geez. <laughs> That'd be funny. Hey, we should do that. I should just come up with like names and then give you like a genre and have you do it. Oh, because it's not hard enough. I know. (laughs) That'd be fun. I think we should do that. Okay, let's give it a shot. Okay, so the clash of tyranny. (laughs) Let's see. Um, I want to say historical just because like tyrants. I think of history. Yeah, I suppose. Clash of tyrants, right? That's tyranny. You can say Clash tyrants, of tyranny. Clash of tyranny. I like it. Let's do historical fiction. Of course. I'm gonna take you on uh, a parallel universe kind of story where we take all of the tyrannical leaders from uh, different times in history. We got Hitler, we got Stalin, we got name your other favorite uh, (laughs) tyrannical leaders. And uh, we're going to transport them just like in Bill and Ted's Bogus oh, Journey. I was just thinking that. I was like, is he going to say and that? Instead of the heroes, we're now taking the villains okay. to a parallel universe. Okay. What I like about this is that we can use each character's unique personality to build out a unique kind of like army, right? Like Hitler will try to build his blonde haired, blue eyed army. Uh, and then Stalin has his own uh, army where I, where I could see it being more mechanized, kind of like steampunky. Right. And then um, we got like all of these different tyrannical leaders that have like these different armies and different styles. And now they're all fighting on like this other parallel universe 
where all of the inhabitants are stuck like in the Stone Age. Have you ever seen Stargate? Yes. So it's kind of like Stargate where you go to another parallel universe mm -hmm. through the Stargate and everybody, I think in Stargate it was like Stone Age, right? Or they were building I, pyramids or something. Yeah, it was Same kind it of kind reminded me of just like Egypt or something. But now that I'm thinking about it, I guess they would have to take their army with them. So it would be the tyrannical leaders plus their army going to another parallel universe. Hmm. Just taking over the world and, and then, then taking, taking over, over each other. And then realizing they don't play well with others and then they have to fight each other. That sounds like it's just going to end Badly. pretty bloodly, pretty bloodily. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible fantasy novel that only sells well as a Kindle version <laughs> and only if you look deep enough on Amazon. Yeah, maybe. That's funny. <laughs> so let me know what story you liked the most in the comments. We'll be down there as well. Let us know what story you hated. Uh, let us know if you want us to do more of these type of videos.